You know, it's easy to take water for granted. You turn on the tap, you mm -hmm. maybe you fill up your glass, and that's pretty much it, or so it seems. But getting that water to you is proving to be more of a challenge for a great number of cities all across the KSFY viewing area. Here in South Dakota, a six-month effort is now underway. It is a literal search for water. This is a story you will only see tonight here on KSFY. <laughs> that there's much more in the subsurface. Derek Isles is a man on a mission. Outside of air, it's South Dakota's most important natural resource. Isles is South Dakota's state geologist. And there's the old saying that the whiskey's for drinking and water's for fighting. And he has a problem that he is trying to solve. The more that we learn about the subsurface, the more that we realize that we don't understand the subsurface. All the colors of the rainbow can be found on an intense series of charts, graphs, and maps near Isle's office. They tell him what's under the ground here in South Dakota. A lot of it is dirt, some of it is rock, and some of it is water. Without water, civilization can't exist. And there is more civilization popping up here in South Dakota, specifically in the southeast, in and around Sioux Falls. It's growth that wouldn't be happening if there wasn't access to water. There just isn't the water resources available in the Sioux Falls area or the Worthington area or the, the Rock Rapids area to support the population base that we have that continues to grow. Jim Allen is the operations manager of the Lewis and Clark Regional Water System. Its water treatment plant just north of Vermilion provides Sioux Falls with 55% of its water supply. And it's why Sioux Falls can grow. Without this plant and its water, Sioux Falls would be stuck. People are going to realize very soon that water is the new oil. It's just as precious, it's more precious. Lewis and Clark General Manager, Troy Larson. Water is a finite resource. People think it's just gonna always be there, and that's not the case. And that point brings us back to state geologist Derek Isles. Is there an aquifer where old reports say there is an aquifer or not? Isles wants to know where all the water in South Dakota is, the untapped sources of H2O that may someday need to be pressed into service. For the next six months, two drilling rigs will be testing sites across eastern South Dakota, searching for water. In South Dakota, the state owns the water. And in order to do a, a good job of managing the state's water resources, you have to have as good of understanding as possible of where are those water resources and what are they. A law passed in Pier decades ago says South Dakota can't mine water from underground aquifers, meaning you can't take out more water than what is being replenished as the aquifer recharges itself. The law protects aquifers from being sucked dry, but... In South Dakota, there's a number of aquifers that are fully allocated. You couldn't drill another well in them if you wanted to. This man knows the reality of that situation. That was one of the, the driving forces for Madison's initial connection back and, and interest in the, in the system back in the early 90s. Chad Comas is the city engineer in Madison, South Dakota. The city's existing well system has had challenges with both water supply and water quality. Madison is supposed to be hooked up directly to the Lewis and Clark Regional Water System, but it's not because promised federal funds have not come through. Uh, water is a critical component and we, we want to be there and ready and not have that as a limitation that could affect our city. Just last week, the city finalized a deal that will pump Lewis and Clark water into Madison, but it does so in a truly indirect manner. Lewis and Clark pumps water to one water system. That system sends it to another system, which then sends it to Madison. Even that roundabout method is music to Madison's ears at this point. So would it not be for Lewis and Clark? Uh, we very, very likely would be looking to expand our well field um, well beyond the city limits area and the, the area of our current well field at significant expense. But that idea is based in hope, not necessarily in rock solid fact. But you know those aquifers exist or you hope those aquifers exist that you would want to tap into? Um, we, we are optimistic they exist, but they're quite some distance away. And what I have found over the last, I would say, 30 years of my career is that some of those reports are not very good. State geologist Derek Isles hopes this six-month drilling project finds new water sources and confirms the water quality of others. The state keeps an eye on existing aquifers in use and finds that levels are holding steady. 
But where are the untapped aquifers? And how much water could they produce? I would like to come up with some real definitive answers. Threats to existing aquifers could be anything from drought to some type of contamination to the aquifer simply drying up and no longer producing water, which is why state geologist Derek Isles and by extension the state of South Dakota would like to know about any other possible sources of water.